Uh, Hangman Also Die was shot in 1942 and first released in 1943. Uh, it was directed by Fritz Lang, the great modernist uh, director who previously in the interwar period uh, shot his most acclaimed uh, film, Metropolis. And uh, he collaborated uh, for this movie with Bertolt Brecht, one of the great uh, playwrights of the 20th century. Uh, together they produced um, a movie which I think is uh, incredibly insightful given that it was uh, shot so shortly after the uh, historical events took place in Prague. Uh, it is loosely based on the story of the assassination of Reinhard Heydrich in May 1942, uh, but of course it contains several fictional elements. Um, what you can see quite clearly throughout the movie is the typical handwriting of Fritz Lang. There's this wonderful, um, uh, wonderfully evocative and characteristically brilliant uh, scene where a Gestapo officer with a dog whip in his hand is entering uh, a cell with two terrified women uh, inside. But all you see is the shadow of the man, which is much more terrifying in many ways than uh, graphic descriptions of violence. So it is left to the imagination of the viewer uh, what will happen next. Um, Brecht also, I think, has left his handwriting quite clearly on this movie in the sense that uh, many of the uh, figures are almost caricatures. There is, for example, the um, more cunning than clever uh, German Gestapo officer Gruber, uh, who is uh, almost a caricature of a, a Gestapo officer. Um, he's not particularly intelligent, but manages to find clues along the way that point him into the right direction, but he's murdered eventually. what we might call the happy end of uh, the, the film, the very strong political message, which is uh, no surrender uh, at the very end of the story, uh, does of course not um, have any historical accuracy. Um, in the end, the um, resistance succeeds in killing not only, um, or not having, only having Gruber killed, but also more importantly, in um, getting the collaborator uh, the main collaborator in the movie who uh, betrayed uh, vital information on the resistance to the German. Uh, that obnoxious man, uh, Chaka, is also almost a caricature of a collaborator. Um, but here again we see the strong influence of, of Brecht as a, as a playwright and as someone whose main experience uh, lies in the world of theatre uh, in, in some ways. Um, Heydrich as well is sort of portrayed as a shrieking Nazi when uh, in reality, he was rather uh, soft-spoken, um, a very vicious man, of course, uh, but uh, highly cultured and also quite eloquent in uh, his phrasings. Uh, so the, the, the shrieking madman that we encounter um, at the beginning of the movie is much more, I think, a reflection of, uh, well, first of all, propaganda. <coughs> um, this is how Nazis were uh, portrayed in, in Allied propaganda during the Second World War. Um, but also, perhaps, um, a reflection of the contemporary understanding of what Nazism was. The Nazis were portrayed as uh, almost insane criminals from the margins of society. Nothing at all. Der Mann irrsinnig geworden, mich in diesem Kauderwelsch anzusprechen. Ich verlange das nicht, ich sei Deutsch gesprochen, wird verstanden. Deutsch, 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 Deutsch. Ich werde diesen tschechischen Gesindel schon einheizen und diesen Abschaum in den Skoda-Werken gleichschalten, als ihn hören und sehen vergeht. Auto! Uh, most historians working on these Nazi perpetrators uh, have since acknowledged that uh, what is rather worrying is that many of these men were shockingly normal, that humans are capable of doing terrible things without being clinically insane. Uh, many of the senior uh, figures, particularly in the SS, uh, came from academic backgrounds, many of them with PhDs, notably in law, and uh, many of these people were therefore highly educated. They were, if anything, representatives, uh, representatives of the upper echelons 
uh, of German society at the time. And therefore, um, what emerges today, I think, as uh, a lesson uh, from history is that many of these people um, had careers often in education, but also in the law, which did not prevent them from doing terrible things, from committing gen genocidal acts during the Second World War, uh, once they believed in the ideology of Nazism. Um, what is also very interesting uh, about the movie Hangman Also Die is that uh, the um, collaboration between Lang and um, Brecht extended to Hans Eisler, one uh, very famous uh, German composer who had previously, during the interwar period, collaborated with Brecht on, on various projects and who was also, like Lang and Brecht, um, forced to leave Germany in 1933 and joined the large emigre community in the United States. Eisler was actually nominated for an Academy Award um, for his contribution to the movie, um, particularly, of course, the, the final song, No Surrender, uh, which is a very a powerful um, summary of, of the political message of this movie, namely that uh, resistance pays, and uh, if, if the population sticks together uh, and is unwilling to give up an individual who uh, has, is prepared to sacrifice his life for the benefit of the nation, then the Nazis will not triumph. Uh, come on, come on! Raise the invisible torch! I'm passing along. Keep it burning, keep it burning. Forward on the road, it has no turning. Die if you must, for a cause that is just. And shout to the end, no surrender. Stop it, Onward, no return. Silence! Nazis, in this case, uh, have to accept the um, version that the, um, uh, the, the, the resistance presents them with, namely that Chaka, the collaborator, was the man who assassinated Reinhard Heydrich, uh, which is not true, and the Nazis know that this is not true, but they have to accept it because they don't make any headway with their investigations into the, uh, the real events uh, of May 1942. Um, in reality, the Nazis were very efficient in finding the true um, collaborators and indeed the, uh, the true assassins of Reinhard Heydrich. Um, within a couple of weeks, they had identified most of the families that had uh, provided shelter to the assassins. And in a typical Gestapo uh, fashion, they threatened family members in order uh, to obtain further information on the whereabouts of the assassins. Uh, this was uh, also aided by uh, one parachuter who decided that in order to protect his family and in order to um, get the money, the uh, reward that was offered by the Nazi authorities um, for any information leading to the whereabouts uh, of the assassins, he decided to uh, offer the information that he had on safe houses that were provided, which eventually led um, the Nazi investigators to the Moravec uh, family, which had uh, provided uh, shelter to the assassins both before and uh, after the killing of Reinhard Heydrich. The Moravec uh, family in many ways seems to resemble uh, the Czech family that is at the heart of this story. Uh, and uh, their fate uh, is, is very tragic uh, in the sense that um, everyone uh, every member of the Moravec family is murdered. Eventually, the Gestapo uh, puts pressure on the son um, by showing him the uh, severed head of his mother in a fish tank, and uh, the uh, interrogating officer threatens to put uh, his father's uh, uh, head next to it. Um, then, under this pressure, the son cracks and reveals that the assassins are hiding in an Orthodox uh, church in the center of Prague, which eventually leads uh, to the surrender, uh, or rather leads to the SS uh, surrounding the, uh, the church and to the suicide of the uh, assassins. Reinhard Heydrich, whose assassination in Prague in May 1942 forms the backdrop of Hangman Also Die, was one of the most powerful politicians and uh, Nazi leaders during the Second World War. 
he is perhaps lesser known to a general audience than Adolf Hitler or the Reich leader SS, Heinrich Himmler, but he played a crucial role behind the scenes of the Third Reich. Uh, first of all, he was head of the uh, criminal and political police in Nazi Germany, of the Gestapo, and uh, also of the SS security service, the sinister intelligence uh, organization of the SS, which also operated as a kind of think tank of policies of persecution between uh, 1939 and 1945. Heydrich, secondly, was in charge of the Holocaust. He was the chief planner of the murder of the Jews of Europe. He was put in charge uh, of the uh, solution of the Jewish question by Adolf Hitler and uh, Hermann Göring. And he continuously planned together with uh, Heinrich Himmler and the top leadership of the uh, Third Reich uh, the murder of almost six million Jews. Thirdly, and that's the capacity in which we encounter him, uh, during the movie, during the opening scenes of the movie, is um, his role as Reich Protector of Bohemia and Moravia, which means that he's Hitler's representative uh, in Prague, in the occupied Czech territories. With these three crucial roles, one can, I think, arguably say that uh, Reinhard Heydrich was one of the uh, most important figures in Nazi Germany, and he's, in fact, the only senior Nazi who is assassinated during uh, the Second World War. The historical background uh, of Reinhard Heydrich, the family background of Reinhard Heydrich, um, is, of course, not captured in this movie because he's only shown in the opening scene of uh, Hangman Also Die. Um, he has quite an unusual family background in the sense that he comes from a, a highly cultured and uh, financially very stable family background. Uh, he was born in 1904 in the city of Halle in Prussia, uh, where his father ran uh, a conservatory. Um, his maternal grandfather was the director of another conservatory, one of the uh, finest uh, establishments of musical education in Germany uh, in uh, Dresden. Um, so together he comes from a, you know, taken together he comes from a very um, culturally rich uh, background, and he is uh, raised and educated in that spirit as well. So uh, he is not a, a murderer in the making from the first days of his life, if you like. So um, we ha what we have to take into consideration are the historical events that uh, shape his career between uh, 1914, between the outbreak of the First World War, and uh, 1942, his death. Um, like many other young men in Germany at the time, Reinhard Heydrich experienced the First World War uh, on the home front and was shocked in, in November 1918 to learn about the defeat of the uh, Imperial German Army. Uh, he was equally shocked by the subsequent uh, revolution, which swept away the German monarchy and replaced it uh, with a republic, the Weimar Republic, uh, in which uh, people like Fritz Lang, the director of Hangman Also Die, um, made their career, uh, notably through uh, movies like Metropolis, one of the great classics of uh, modern cinema. The family business of the Heydrichs in Halle uh, suffered immensely under the inflation which started in Germany as a result of the First World War in the early 1920s and which deprived many middle-class families of their incomes and their savings. So many people in Germany could no longer afford a musical education for their children. So Reinhard Heydrich decided to go into the Navy. Um, a career as a, an officer seemed to promise material security uh, at a time where little security uh, was given. And he um, succeeded in that career for quite some time. He spent four years uh, in the Navy and uh, ended as, uh, as first lieutenant. Um, until 1931, his career thrived. Eventually, however, it ended with uh, a dismissal uh, from the Navy as a result of an affair with uh, two women. He promised uh, both of them uh, to marry them. He was engaged to both of them. And one of the women was the daughter of an, of an influential uh, man with very uh, good contacts to the uh, Navy leadership at the time. So Heydrich was summoned in front of a, a military honor court and uh, as a result of his arrogant behavior towards the court and his refusal to acknowledge any, any guilt in the affair, uh, he was dismissed from the Navy at the height of the Great Depression in 1931. So uh, with no family income to fall back on and uh, no career prospects at the height of the Great Depression, uh, Heydrich then relied on the advice of his uh, 
fiancée, the woman that he eventually married, Lina von Austen, who came from uh, a family of strong Nazi supporters. Um, Lina advised him to seek a job in the paramilitary organization of the Nazi party, which she supported, the SS at the time, um, and uh, also urged him to seek a job interview with Heinrich Himmler, who had just become the uh, Reich leader SS, although the SS at the time was a very small organization and the Nazi party had not yet become uh, the big mass party that it would eventually become. Hitler had not taken uh, control of the German government yet. That only happened in 1933. So it was a bit of a gamble to join the SS at this time. Um, after the interview, which went extremely well for Heydrich, not least because of his uh, physical appearance, uh, he's very, he was very tall and uh, blonde, of course, uh, all of that appealed in combination uh, with his military bearing to Heinrich Himmler, who immediately charged him with the task of uh, setting up a new intelligence service, which would eventually become the SS Security Service, or the SD. After 1933, after Hitler's rise to power, um, Himmler and Heydrich uh, ascend in the hierarchy of the Third Reich quite rapidly. In fact, by 1936, Himmler had taken over the police in all of Germany, and uh, Heydrich, as his uh, first lieutenant, um, rose accordingly. He became head of the Gestapo uh, in, by 1934 uh, and eventually of the so-called Reich Security Main Office, which included the criminal police uh, as well as the Gestapo and the SS intelligence service. Uh, in that capacity, he was also, after 1939, in charge of setting up the SS mobile killing squads, the so-called Einsatzgruppen, which killed hundreds of thousands of uh, Jews in Eastern Europe over the course of the Second World War. Finally, in September 1941, uh, Hitler ordered uh, Heydrich to go to Prague to assume the role of Reich Protector of Bohemia and Moravia. Um, this occupied territory was of particular relevance to the Nazis because of the flourishing armament industry uh, in Czechoslovakia before the war and it was widely considered to be one of the best in Europe. Notably, the Skoda works, which we also encounter uh, in the opening scene of Hangman Also Die, when uh, Heydrich drives off, uh, clearly to be assassinated, uh, and tells his uh, driver to bring him to the Skoda works, um, probably, or so we assume, to check uh, to what extent the workers there are involved in resistance activities. In uh, Hangman Also Die, the assassination is portrayed to be the act of an individual, Dr. Svoboda, a noble patriot supported by uh, the home resistance in the occupied uh, Czech lands. Uh, in historical reality, however, the uh, home resistance had no idea that Heydrich was to be assassinated. The plot originated in London in the summer of 1941, where the Czech president in exile, Edward Benesch, uh, liaised with uh, the British intelligence services over the possibility of um, a high-powered, uh, spectacular assassination. Quite quickly, uh, it became clear that Heydrich was going to be the target as soon as he was sent to uh, Prague in September 1941. The reason why Heydrich was chosen had relatively little to do with the fact that um, he was in charge of the Holocaust, but much more that he was a major threat to the Czech resistance. As soon as he arrived in Prague, he cracked down uh, very hard on the resistance, rounded up some of the leading figures, and there was a real danger that the resistance movement would be wiped out altogether. In addition to that, uh, Edward Benesch was majorly concerned that there was not enough resistance um, behind the German lines. In the summer of 1941 and early autumn of 1941, it looked as if the Germans would actually win the war. Uh, Britain was under a lot of pressure. The uh, German army was plunging deep into the Soviet Union, and it looked as if the Stalinist regime was not going to be able to withstand the pressure uh, put on them by the Nazis. So in that situation, um, both Churchill and Benesch wanted to um, increase resistance activities behind the German lines in order to divert their attention. So that's the, the general background, uh, the general historical background, why uh, Heydrich was chosen. Um, the assassins themselves were actually parachuted into the protectorate uh, from London. A British plane brought them over. 
And uh, they had left uh, Prague in 1938 as soon as the Germans uh, moved in. They uh, joined, first of all, a, a Polish uh, volunteer force, uh, which could not uh, withstand the German pressure militarily in September 1939, then moved to France, uh, where they witnessed uh, the fall of the regime there and were evacuated together with the British Expedition Corps uh, to England, where they regrouped and uh, Within that group, uh, there were then a number of volunteers who uh, chose uh, to join the uh, special operation executive, the British special operations executive led uh, teams that were going to be uh, parachuted back into the protectorate in order to carry out acts of sabotage and to restore radio connections uh, with London. So Gabczyk and Kubisch, the two young men who volunteered for this operation, uh, knew exactly that this was a suicide mission because many other parachutists had been dropped over the lands before and most of them had been caught uh, by the Gestapo uh, sooner rather than later, had been brutally interrogated and uh, finally murdered. So they knew that in carrying out this highly dangerous uh, mission, um, they would have to rely on their wits, but would ultimately be caught by the Gestapo, which is indeed what happens. Um, so in reality, the story doesn't have the same kind of happy end that, um, or the same encouraging message that uh, Hangman Also Die contains. Um, so they were dropped into the protectorate uh, just before uh, Christmas 1941 and spent the following months finding an ideal place to carry out the assassination plot. Um, what aided uh, the assassins was that Heydrich himself never used a police cohort. Uh, he had no police protection while he was driving from his country estate to work in Prague every day. So he was only accompanied by his driver. And uh, as soon as the weather uh, got warmer, he also used an open-top car, um, a large Mercedes uh, convertible. He always used the same route to work, uh, to go on his way to work, and uh, the assassins figured out uh, which route he would use and positioned themselves in, in May, late May 1942, on a beautiful summer day, uh, at a hairpin curve in uh, the district of Lieben. As soon as uh, Heydrich's car turned around the hairpin bend and where it had to slow down in order to uh, make it without derailing, uh, one of the assassins stepped out of the shades uh, used his Sten gun, which had been uh, given to him by uh, the British SOE, and tried to uh, shoot Reinhard Heydrich. Unfortunately for him, his uh, gun jammed. And in that situation, Heydrich told the driver to stop the car, which was a, a fateful decision, because instead of accelerating the car, driving away from the scene, uh, Heydrich was determined to shoot the assassin, as he only believed that there would be uh, one person only. In that situation, the second assassin tossed uh, a grenade, which uh, narrowly missed the car, uh, but exploded at uh, the back wheel, and uh, the explosion injured Heydrich so severely that he died a week later as a result of blood infection. Uh, both of them at first managed to get away from the scene uh, to escape, um, but eventually, after two weeks, uh, their hiding place was revealed by a traitor, um, it was a, an Orthodox church in the uh, center of Prague. The church was then surrounded by a few hundred SS men, and after a prolonged uh, gunfight and an attempt uh, by the SS to set the cellar in which they were hiding underwater, uh, the men uh, shot themselves because they feared that if they were caught, they would be tortured and then eventually uh, be killed anyway. Um, over the following weeks, uh, thousands of Czechs, hostages, um, as well as uh, concentration camp inmates were murdered and um, the revenge of the Germans culminated uh, in the destruction, the complete annihilation of the bohemian village of uh, Lidice, um, where hundreds of men were shot. The women were sent to uh, a concent special concentration camp uh, for women and the children um, were sent away to a place where it was checked whether they could be Germanizable, in other words, whether their uh, physical appearance was suitably German uh, to send them to foster uh, parents uh, in Germany. Uh, the children that were found not to be Germanizable, not fit for Germanization, were also murdered. And that's, of course, the background um, against which Fritz Lang and Bertolt Brecht decided to shoot this movie. There was a major uh, public outcry everywhere in the Western world uh, once the footage, which was filmed by uh, the Nazis themselves, 
and uh, shown in the weekly news reels. Uh, once these uh, news broke and were also shown in America and Britain, there was a major outrage. Several uh, cities in the United States, but also in Mexico, where there were large emigre communities, also large Czech uh, communities, uh, renamed their towns and villages uh, after Lidice. And uh, Lidice, in many ways, provided uh, the Americans also with a, a major uh, propaganda tool because uh, after uh, the attack on Pearl Harbor, Lidice had uh, become another um, symbol of uh, German or um, German and Japanese atrocities. Uh, so many of the posters asking people to sign uh, war bonds um, uh, essentially showed images of Lidice uh, as well as images of Pearl Harbor in order to mobilize the population. And that's precisely the reason why um, Fritz Lang and Bertolt Brecht decided to make a movie uh, about the, the, the crimes of the Germans in retaliation uh, for the assassination of Reinhard Heydrich. Heydrich himself uh, only plays a shadowy uh, role in this uh, movie. He only makes a brief appearance. But the consequences of his assassination are uh, the major theme, the atrocities committed by the Nazis, uh, the heroic resistance of individual Czechs who are willing uh, to hide the assassins um, at the risk of their own lives, of course. <laughs>